Good day, fellow learners. This is your mentor, your Fatshik Badi mentor, eh? welcoming you once again to another teaching and learning session for the NCLEX IN. So for today, we're going to talk about one of the trends, and that's going to be pernicious anemia and vitamin B12. Now, a lot of you might have a lot of misconceptions about this condition. Like, for example, um, what is it really about pernicious anemia? Is it primarily nutritional? Is it autoimmune or is it both? What are the common risk factors about this condition and what could be the correct method of vitamin B12 administration? A lot of us would be um, able to recall about general information about uh, the patient having the medication for the rest of their lives. It is given per IM, the vitamin B12 is given once a month, but there's more to it than just meets the eye. So, Let's start. So when you say pernicious anemia, literatures have identified that it is an autoimmune condition, although some patients have increased risk for it. Okay. So who are these patients? The elderly in which the um, stomach could have atrophied, and so it's no longer producing enough intrinsic factor that facilitates the absorption of vitamin B12. Patients post gastrectomy could also suffer from the same condition. Patients with um, family history of the disease, patients with diabetes mellitus are also at risk. And of course, those who um, are residing in a specific location like the Northern European regions. Now, now, the question is, what is the main problem in pernicious anemia? Well, the inability of the patient to absorb vitamin B12 because of the absence of the substance known as intrinsic factor, which is in the stomach. Therefore, eventually the patient would manifest the signs of anemia, like for example, fatigue, weakness, headache, weight loss, pallor, okay? Plus, this time, since this is pernicious anemia, the patient might develop neurologic manifestations like confusion, unsteady gait, peripheral neuropathy manifested by tingling sensation. Primarily, the patient would describe this as a sensation of pins and needles that would be found in the fingers and the toes. So be very, very careful. That could be a potential antlex arm style question. You are given a drawing of a person and you're being asked to put a check on which part of the body should you be assessing peripheral neuropathy. It's gonna be the fingers, and of course, the toes. So the patient could also develop um, depression, including signs and symptoms of dementia, and of course, memory loss. Now, apart from the signs and symptoms of anemia and the signs and symptoms that are neurologic in nature, the client could also have signs and symptoms in the gastrointestinal tract, like heartburn and loss of appetite. Now, question is, how is this diagnosed? In the past, during my time, okay, we are taught about Schilling's test that requires a 24-hour urine um, um, gathering, a urine output gathering in order to monitor the amount of vitamin B12 that's excreted in the urine after the oral ingestion of vitamin B12. Okay, that is what is being done in the olden days. So it's really done nowadays. Now, um, the test that's being done right now is actually your vitamin B12 blood test that requires um, blood specimen. And of course, you will have to tell your patient to remain NPO for 12 hours before the test and to stop taking the vitamin biotin, okay, three days or 72 hours before the test because of that interferes with the results. Now, there are also a lot of misconceptions or adjustments, I should say, about the administration of vitamin B12 as a form of treatment for patients with pernicious anemia. It used to be that during my time, we are told, and if memory serves me right, that the treatment would involve intramuscular administration of vitamin B12 once a month for the rest of the patient's life. Of course, that's still true. But there are some adjustments as to the manner how the vitamin B12 is administered. Now, it can be administered either IM or deep 
subcutaneously. So it's not just I am, it could be administered I am or deep subcutaneously. And take note, for the first week after the diagnosis of pernicious anemia, approximately 100 micrograms of vitamin B12 is administered daily. That's for the first seven days. Then after the first seven days, the next the, the week thereafter, it's given on alternate days. Okay, for seven doses. And after that, for the next two to three weeks, after the alternate day seven doses, it's given every three to four days. And only then after the daily dose, the alternate dose and the dose that is given, okay, every three to four days for two to three weeks, will it be given once a month for the rest of the patient's life, okay? So how do you evaluate the effect of vitamin B12? Definitely, you will have to base it on... Um, the diminishing manifestation of pernicious anemia. So you'll have um, diminished sensation of pins and needles, diminished pallor, okay? Weight gain for the patient, diminished confusion, okay? Um, the absence of the beef red tongue, okay? All of this would indicate positive outcomes for the treatment of pernicious anemia. So it's very, very important for you to recall all concepts and then the adjustments and revisions that are being presented now by a lot of literatures. So let's move on. Before we get to start and apply what we've learned to a simple question, let me start with today's good news. And this is coming from Edna Woods. Thank you so much, Dr. Ray Gappos, for the great YouTube and Plex review materials. I'm always excited to listen to your blog. Appreciate much, sir, for sharing this video and your expertise and knowledge in the nursing profession around the globe. Thank you. And to our students from you now three countries where the Ray Gappos system is present, adding that to 25. We're now in 28 countries. Thank you so much for believing in our system. God bless you and stay safe always. Thank you so much, Eden May Woods, for the very, very kind words. Now, join us in this mission. Our goal is to provide free and like our application review to 100 nurses to help us achieve this. Just watch and finish the ads in our videos. Once again, don't skip the ads because the income supports my advocacy to send and to change the lives of at least 100 nurses. Thank you so much for allowing me to do that. So let's try to use what we've learned to answer a simple question. So here we go. Which of the following instructions should the nurse provide a patient with pernicious anemia on the frequency of treatment with vitamin B12? I told you about this a while back. Daily for the first week, yes, that is true. Alternate days after the first week, Yes, and that's for seven more doses. Then every two to four days for the next two to three weeks, yes. Once a month, I am lifetime after that, yes. Once a month, deep subcutaneous lifetime, yes. Once a month per autumn, now this is where the problem is. You don't give per autumn because the patient will no longer absorb it because of their deficiency in the intrinsic factor in the stomach that facilitates absorption of vitamin B12. So this will not help the patient, we put an X. So that's how easy it gets if you're learning the functional concepts that we are discussing. So once again, here's your mentor, Ray. And if you want to request for any topic which you may want me to cover in my future videos, send in your request to my email, mentor.raygapos at gmail.com. So this is your mentor, your fact check buddy, mentor Ray, saying a functional concept a day keeps your NCLEX R and fears away. So if you love this video, please don't forget to subscribe, share, and hit the like and bell notification buttons. Thank you very, very much and have a good day.